Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome little mini PC from B-Link. Now this is new to the B-Link line and it's known as the B-Link GTR. This is actually their first Ryzen powered mini PC and on paper it looks like an awesome little unit. It's running the Ryzen 5 3550H. It's a quad core processor, 8 threads with a boost up to 3.7 and built in Radeon Vega 8 graphics. Now you might remember these specs from another mini PC I recently did a review on known as the Mini 4 forums DMAF5 and this does come in a little bigger than the DMAF but we do have a lot more expansion on the B-Link version. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. In this video we're going to go over the specs, pricing and then we'll get right into some testing. They do make a couple versions of these. You can get the bare bones kit which doesn't come with any storage or RAM. You can also opt for 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage or you could go all out with their highest end version, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD and a one terabyte 2.5 inch hard drive. So inside of the box, you're obviously gonna receive the GTR PC itself. And under here, we do have some documentation. There's a user manual. We also get a few extra accessories here, like screws for the bracketing system, an HDMI cable and a DisplayPort cable, a 16 gigabyte USB flash drive with all of the drivers. And we also get the power supply, 19 volts, three amps. Taking a look at the specs for a mini PC, we have a pretty powerful little unit here. For the CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 3550H. This is a quad-core CPU, 8 threads, up to 3.7 GHz. For the GPU, we have the built-in AMD Vega 8 at 1200 MHz. This does support up to 32GB of SODIMM DDR4. And I've only tested 2666 RAM in here, but I think it might go a bit higher, so you might get a little more performance by using faster RAM. As for I.O., we have two M.2 SSD slots, six USB 3.0 ports, two full-size HDMI ports, one display port, two LAN ports, one USB Type-C port on the front, and this does support display out, so overall we can have four displays coming off of this mini PC. It has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and you can always add a 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive to expand the storage on this thing. And there's even a fingerprint sensor built into the top of the GTR, so overall for a mini PC, this thing is pretty decked out. So I personally do like the design of this thing, and by the way, we do have dual microphones up front here, and it will interact with Cortana or any other voice assistant that'll work with Windows or Linux. The version I have here for this video is their top configuration, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, 512GB M.2 SSD, and 1TB mechanical hard drive, but they offer two other models, bare bones, no RAM, no storage, or the 8GB model. And these range anywhere from $380 all the way up to $670. As you can see on the back side of the unit, we have tons of IO here, and there's also two fans built in. It's a big heatsink system, and it should keep it pretty cool, but we'll look at that when we get into testing. The specs on the GTR are very similar to the Mini Forums DMAF 5 that I recently did a review on, but as you can see, the Mini's Forum does have a beat in the form factor department. It's a bit taller, but it is a lot smaller. It's more compact when you really get down to it. So I did want to pull the bottom off of here and take a quick look inside. It comes off really easy. It's got four Phillips head screws. And once we pull that off, we'll be greeted with the 2.5 inch hard drive. This is a mechanical one terabyte drive. This is the higher end model they have, but you could replace this with an SSD if you wanted. So the bracketing system that this 2.5 inch drive is sitting on top of is actually the heat sink for the RAM and the NVMe inside of here. I'm going to go ahead and get this off real quick. And as you can see here, it has these thermal pads to cool down the M.2 SSDs. This one here that's installed is an NVMe, but the other slot here is only compatible with SATA 3 SSDs, which is totally fine. You can add a bigger drive in here. At least we have one NVMe. There is 16 gigabytes of RAM in here and it's running in dual channel. These are 2400 megahertz sticks, but inside of the BIOS, we can actually overclock and I went up to 2666. And there are settings to go all the way up to 3200 megahertz. I know these sticks here won't go that high, but if you added some 3200 megahertz RAM, it should work with this. Overall, the way this is set up and built is really nice. We have a lot of storage expansion here. We can go all the way up to 32 gigabytes with the RAM, and we can add another M.2 SSD as long as it's a SATA 3 SSD. First things first, I wanted to give you a quick look at this BIOS here. It's pretty unlocked, but we're not going to be able to overclock the CPU. I mean, we just can't do it, but we can overclock the RAM. So if I go over here to Advanced, and then I go to AMD CBS, uh, UMC Common Options. Yeah, this is it. DDR4 Common Options, Timings Configuration. You'll have to accept this. 
I've enabled overclock and I've went up from 2400 megahertz to 2666. So this is half speed here, but as you can see, I mean, it goes way up. It actually goes all the way up to 4200 megahertz. And I'm not sure if that's going to be an option here, but uh, it's pretty crazy to see that. Right now we're sitting at 133 times 2, which is 2666. So yeah, we have that option here, which we didn't on the other PC we recently took a look at. And the last thing I changed inside of the BIOS here is under NBIO, System Configuration. From here we can change it from 12 all the way up to 54 watts. We have the Consumer, which is at 54 watts. We also have Embedded, and I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but I'm set to 54 watts Consumer so we can get the most out of this little PC. Okay, so here it is. We're running Windows 10 Home 64-bit. That's what comes pre-installed on the NVMe. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 5 3550H. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 2667. I was off by one megahertz. And we also have the Radeon Vega 8 graphics. So yeah, overall, this has been really nice. Feeling good. I mean, you could use this as an everyday desktop. You want to do some web browsing? No problem at all. It's a super smooth experience. I mean, I wouldn't have any issues using this as an everyday desktop for normal use. You know, watching YouTube, 4K video playback, 1080p, checking my email, doing some image editing, some light video editing. This little machine will definitely handle it. Let's go ahead and check out some 4K video streaming from YouTube. Got a couple drop frames when you start out, but that's normal. I really don't see this chip giving us any issues with 4K video playback, be it streaming from YouTube, Plex, or even native 4K playback. So if we're doing 4K here, 720, 1080 is going to be a non-issue for this setup. Working really nicely. So now let's move over to Plex with some higher bitrate stuff. All right, so first up, 4K, 60 FPS, 75 megabits per second. Might take a second to buffer, but we'll go full screen with it. Overall, really smooth. I'm not noticing any stuttering or anything like that. So let's take the megabits up a bit. We're going to go with a 4K, 24 FPS, 155 megabits per second video. And this one gives the low-end Intel chips a run for its money, but it buffered out really quickly. 4K, 24 FPS, 155 megabits. Looking really nice here. So overall, video playback on a device like this, be it streaming or native, is going to be a non-issue. 720, 1080p, or even really high bitrate 4K videos will work. The next thing I wanted to test was Cinebench R15, and the reason I'm not using R20 is because I've already run this on the other chips you see here. For the B-Link GTR, total score of 742. On the mini forum, 738, we're not far off from each other. This might have a little better cooling. Moving down to the 3400G and the 2400G, which are desktop class processors, four cores, eight threads, 3400G, 834, 2400G, 818. Next thing I wanted to test was Blender. I'm just using the quick BMW test here. On the B-Link GTR, we finished this in 2 minutes and 38 seconds. On the Mini Forums, DMAF5, 2 minutes and 44 seconds. This is actually leading me to believe that we might have a better cooling solution in the GTR because it does come ahead of the Mini Forums by just a bit, but they have the same exact chip. So using this as an everyday desktop would work out just fine. We got plenty of power there, but what about gaming? I think it's time to move over there. We have that built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics at 1200 megahertz, and uh, I think we'll get some pretty decent 720p gaming out of this thing. So first up, we have Forza Horizon 4. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get Afterburner to display over this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I do have the FPS listed up in the top right-hand corner. And Afterburner was still running in the background. I achieved an average of 54 FPS at 720p low settings, and the game felt fully playable. Next up, we have Subnautica 720p, low settings with the water quality set to high. We're getting an average of 40 FPS, definitely not the best performance. If you wanted to lock this at half V-Sync and run it at 30, it would do it all day.
And yeah, this will run Crisis. I'm at 720p low. We're getting an average of 62 FPS, and that's really around the water here. When we go deeper into the forest, it does jump up a bit. Okay, so here's GTA 5. I'm getting an average of around 57 FPS, but if we do take a look at Afterburner running in the top left-hand corner, you can see that the GPU is not hitting 1200 megahertz. And I have seen this in the past with these built-in Radeon Vega graphics, especially with the Udo Bolt. So as it sits right now, we're not getting the full potential out of this APU. We're sitting anywhere from 1000 to 1100 megahertz, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but we're working with integrated graphics and every little bit helps, so hopefully they get that BIOS out soon. And the final game I tested here was Doom Eternal. I'm using the Vulcan back in. We're getting an average of around 44 FPS. Really not that bad for a newer game. But keep in mind, we're still not hitting those max clocks on the GPU, so we could get a little more out of this. So before I wrap this video up, I just wanted to do a quick test on that GPU clock speed. We should hit a maximum of 1200 megahertz. That's what that Vega 8 should clock up to. But in gaming, I'm only seeing around 1100 to 1150. Now, one thing that I did test was Ryzen controller and it still doesn't clock all the way up. But if we take a look at the Radeon settings here, we have the clock speed of the GPU. I'm just gonna run this real quick in GPU Z. I also have CPU Z opened up under the graphics section we're hitting 1200 megahertz. And it'll stay there all day long, but while I'm gaming, it just will not max out. It's kind of odd. Hopefully, a BIOS update will fix this in the near future. As for power consumption, this thing does a pretty good job. Remember, I'm set to 54 watts in the BIOS. You can always lower this down if you really want to, but at idle, 11.6 watts. 4K video streaming, 16.4 watts. Average gaming, 42.8. And in my peak test, which totally maxes this thing out, 67.4 watts. So I've only had a couple days to spend with this. I definitely want to spend more time with it. So I will be doing an update video in the next week or so. So keep an eye out on the channel. But so far, this has been a pretty awesome little performing mini PC. Now it does come with a high price tag. Like I mentioned, 350 to 670, depending on where you pick it up from and your configuration. But you're really paying for that form factor. So if you don't need something this small, you can always build a custom PC for a lot cheaper than this that will definitely outperform it. And keep in mind that we're going to start seeing the 4000 series APUs being released in these mini PCs. And AMD actually just announced their 4000 series APUs for desktops, and those are absolute beasts. So if you're looking for a little more performance and you really don't need a form factor like this, I would definitely save your money. But if you're looking for a mini PC right now with a third gen Ryzen CPU in it, this is a great little choice. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye on the channel because I will have a couple more videos coming out on the B-Link GTR. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.